All right, and welcome back to the Wild Table. This is part two of our most recent goat hunting adventure. Today, we brought the goat to Tyra to our friend Stav and Kaya's place, and we're going to cook a beautiful, delicious, butterfly whole leg of wild goat. I just want to talk about like how important it is to me uh, to be harvesting wild meat. Here in New Zealand we're just incredibly lucky that we have the opportunity to harvest wild meat year round and there's so much different stuff that we can get. Um, you know, like the reason why it's really really important to me to be able to go and get my own wild meat is because first of all I get to do it myself. So not only do I get to understand and know exactly where that meat came from, I also can go and get it myself. So there's a really strong personal connection to what I eat, which is really important to me. But then also from a health perspective, you know, when you're eating wild game and wild food, you're not getting any of the sprays, herbicides, pesticides, antibiotics, antifungals, etc. that's getting sprayed on almost all of our food supply. Um, and that's really, really important for your, for your health and your longevity. You know, so of course there's organic produce and there's uh, free range farmed animals, but even they will have to receive some kind of treatment to keep them healthy. You know, and if you're getting like wild goat or wild deer or wild pig like straight out of the bush, guaranteed that animal has had a nice, healthy, happy life and it's completely free of anything that will damage your system. So it's much, much healthier for you. So, you know, the place where we just harvested these goats, some of those farmers will shoot, you know, dozens and dozens of animals and they won't actually won't get, even get used. So I would so strongly to encourage people to just go and even get something as simple to hunt as a goat and get that wild meat in your freezer. Because it is, at the end of the day, way better for you. Okay, so what we're going to do with this goat is not particularly complicated. Really, all we're going to do is we're going to set up the camp right in a minute, which I'll explain to you when that comes out. We're going to butterfly the, the um, goat legs, open them right up. We're going to stuff some of the garlic cloves in, and then essentially just going to get the goat onto the fire. After that, we're going to make it baste with olive oil, um, a few herbs, um, salt, and of course some of that special Hungarian paprika. And then every half hour or so as the meat is cooking, we're just going to baste it um, with, with the basting liquid. And of course, we've also brought a nice bundle of rosemary, which is what we're going to use as a basting brush. Okay, so here we've got two whole hind quarters of one of the young goats that we just shot at Tui Farms. And what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to butterfly them. So basically we're separating the hock from the ham, and then we're going to take the ham and remove the bone and thereby opening the meat right up, which makes it a lot easier to cook. Super simple process. So in order to separate the ham from the hock, we first of all have to find the joint uh, which, which connects the, the lower leg from the upper leg and that's super simple. It's just in here. Sometimes you got to practice and sort of prod around with your knife a little bit. But it isn't typically a particularly complicated cut to make. Um, on a young animal, I find sometimes you got to poke the knife in there and just separate the sinew and then you know, it's pretty much just up and down and we've just separated the thigh from the lower leg. Now, once the, once the lower leg, um, or the shank, is removed, sorry I called it a hock before but it's actually a shank, then we can take the ham, we can turn it upside down and we can locate the femur. Here, we've got the top, which is the, um, the ball of the ball and socket joint, um, and here's the bottom of the bone. So really, all you got to do is you just got to find the right seams that connect over the top of the bone, even if you're not good at butchery, um, with a nice sharp knife, if you just have a little bit of a poke around, you should be able to quite simply open that whole thing right up and expose the bone. Once we've exposed the bone, all we really need to do is just go in underneath and cut the whole thing right up. You'll find butchery videos that do this nicer um, and cleaner, but that's quite okay because these bones generally will either get used for bone broth 
or they're going to go straight to the dogs um, to be also enjoyed. From here we just need to make a couple more simple cuts, basically just following the seam and then pulling with your fingers a little bit opens the meat right up. Next we're going to take some garlic, we've got some fresh supermarket garlic here but also some beautiful organic smoked garlic which we're going to use which is going to impart some really nice flavor into the meat. We're just going to expose and peel some of these cloves and then make a few slits in the meat and then we just stuff the garlic right inside the meat. Okay, so what we're going to use for cooking today is the um, Osbry Camp Bry. Um, in a previous video you've seen us use uh, the uh, Pit Bry. Um, this is the simpler, more um, compact version that you can just quite easily chuck into the back of the car and take it camping with you. It's essentially just a really nice simple stainless steel stand that this basket can go onto. And this here is the basket that we're going to use for cooking. It's stainless steel. Uh, it's a super simple design, essentially we're just going to take the meat and some veggies and sandwich, just sandwich it in here between two um, layers of stainless steel mesh. Then we lock it off at the end and then that whole thing can get put on the fire. And the really handy thing about it, because it is sandwiched, you can turn it either which way. So we're going to get that meat in here, get it on the fire. Okay, so in order to apply the base, I really like using natural materials like, like pine needles and in this case uh, fresh rosemary which we've trimmed from our bush at home. I'm just going to take a few sprigs and cut them off, sort of a nice equal length if we can. And then just using some natural twine, tie them together and make a sort of a paintbrush. Um, and just, you know, as you're cooking it, it sort of really helps to impart that rosemary flavor onto the meat. Okay, in order to make the base, it's really easy. We're just going to take a whole lot of high quality extra virgin olive oil. Uh, we're going to take some aromatics like rosemary and bay leaf, a little bit of garlic and we've got some salt here. We're going to use some homemade balsamic vinegar and the special ingredient is that pure Hungarian paprika which is going to go in there and just give it some beautiful beautiful flavor um, and pepper. Could you imagine that? Just chuck it into a cup, whisk it all up and then we can use this uh, rosemary bundle that we've made here and we use that to apply it to the meat as it cooks. Big fan of basting, I think it's one of the nicest ways to keep your uh, meat nice and moist and impart flavor as you cook. So it's going to take a good amount of that oil, we'll just sort of slap it onto the meat. And the veggies, the veggies are also quite partial, so olive oil and garlic and herbs. And of course it sort of helps to stoke the fire a wee bit as well. From here, this whole process just becomes a little bit more relaxing. The wood is burning slow but hot and aside from the occasional turning of the basket and basting, I can pretty much just leave this food to cook itself. I love that. And while I kick back and watch the hazy smoke lazily drift through the air, David and Kaya set out to harvest some salads from their own semi-wild garden patch. And the look and feel of this is nourishing just to witness. Right on, so uh, we've basically like cooked this meal down with the fire, which I really like. We started off nice and hot and nice and high, and then gradually as the fire burnt down, we just started moving it down. So one of the reasons why I use a uh, like really strong hardwood like oak is because you only need a few pieces and it burns for quite a long time, and you can really sort of just cook the meal down um, with the wood. I'm gonna open this thing up right now and take all the food out, and we're gonna go upstairs and enjoy. And after an hour or so, this kite is well and truly ready for the wild table. The goat meat is tender and juicy and the courgettes are dripping with delicious basting oil. The flavors of paprika, garlic, rosemary and bay leaf make for an inviting smell that has my mouth watering. And as soon as I cut into this meat, 
I know this is going to be a great meal. It's delicious. It's beautiful. From here, I just shut up. And we really enjoy a feast of wild goat, homegrown vegetables, and even some cordial made from Pohutukawa flowers. A delight all in its own right. We chat and sip and talk and laugh. And once again, I am reminded how little it takes to feel truly good. The food brought to this table by the collective labor of this bunch and laughter shared. I doubt any material possession will ever even come close to making me feel this satisfied. And I'm compelled to urge anyone, go out and harvest some wild food. Take time away from the screen and get your hands dirty. Plant some veggies, reap the benefits of reconnecting to your food and it'll be worth it. It's good to have a fan base wherever you go. <laughs> Watching it on your phone.